Welcome to DXB Today. We have an absolutely jam-packed show for you tonight. We're going to be talking about technology behind the food chain. Might not sound as interesting, but we want to know how that food gets from those producers to our plates. And we've got so much more. Let's take a look. Khaled tries out Ichiryu, the latest ramen house, bringing the unique concept of solo dining combined with authentic Japanese experiences right here to the city. And talented singer and pianist Paulina Sandan will be joining us right here in the studio for a performance. Okay, another food show with the three of us. I hope you've had your lunch. Paris. I have, but I've heard about Ichiri. You were telling me about Ichiri. I can't wait to see what Khalid gets up to down there because I think it combines my favorite things, noodles and being alone. So I really want to try it out. <laughs> Well, I, I've, no, I've not actually got the hint that Faris likes to be alone, actually. Doesn't seem like the time. Him. But you know what I'm really looking forward to today is hearing about all of that tech behind it, because we just take it for granted, don't That's we? True. We go on our phone, we just tap, 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 and then we hope it's here within like 45 minutes. Yeah, and for, for sure, for entrepreneurs, imagine there are a lot of budding entrepreneurs who would probably want to know what we're going to be talking about on the show today. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. I, I feel like there's people like my dad, for example, when they visit Dubai, they're like, 26, uh, 50 dirhams for an eggs benedict. It's just <laughs> eggs and hollandaise. So I'm like, yeah, but you're not thinking about the, the technology, the, the rent, the things that go behind the scenes. And we're hopefully going to be delving into all that in today's episode. Well, we'll see if our guest co-host can help us out with that one. Let's find out who it is. Hi, I'm Omar Al Shamsi, CEO and founder of Watermelon, and I can't wait to see you shortly. Omar will be joining us right here in the studio in just a little bit. But first, we discovered a restaurant that allows foodies to enjoy solo dining. And who better to send than Khalid to check it out? Did he enjoy eating alone? Let's find out. Anime meets food. We're talking about Ichiro Ramen House. I'm here with Carl, who is one of the co-founders of a unique concept restaurant right here in the heart of Dubai. Carl, it's a pleasure having you with us. Tell us more of your journey. Me and my younger brother, who is the co-founder of the restaurant as well, came from a different field. All right, We came from an, an events agency for 15 years. My elder brother is into ramen business. My younger brother is into anime, and we're 90s kids, right? And 90s anime is big, big one. So putting them together, and they're both Japanese as well. And then we came up with this great idea, Dubai, or in the UAE, it, it's, it's a fast-facing place. Dine, enjoy, and leave. The four hero ramens that we have, this is actually in the UAE flag color. We currently have around about seven ramens, and we're introducing five more during the anniversary. Bochiseki is a Japanese way of doing a solo dining. It came from Japan. So Japan, actually, they made this for those women who loves to eat ramen, but very shy to eat ramen properly. This concept of ours has been launched and the first ever in the UAE and actually in the Middle East. Yeah, apart from all of this um, anime and, and a lot of collection from Nico, we also show in this restaurant some live feeds in Japan. We have some uh, live feed from different parts of Japan that gives you more feel that you are into the city. You know, a ramen is really unique because one of the uniqueness of this ramen, especially the broth, the broth is prepared for 16 hours. So we're gonna serve you the best ramen. Hopefully you like it, you let us know. But the best way to serve that is we have to serve it in the bochiseki, in the solo dining. Let's go. Gotta join my food in silence.
Salad looked like he was having far too much fun at Hiryu, considering it's supposed to be solo dining. Uh, it's very close to here, actually, in the studios down at Almina Port, so maybe we can... Let's go. Sort that Let's out go after, after this. this. <laughs> right, OK, now time to introduce our guest co-host sitting right next to us. He is a CEO revolutionising the F&B industry by fostering financial solutions to support growth in the sector, utilising the impact of technology to turn challenges into opportunities. Please welcome to the show the CEO of Watermelon, Mr. Omar Shamsi. Welcome. How thank are you? Thank you very much. I'm very well. Thank so you. Nice Appreciate to see it. you. And you're probably super, super busy. So thank you for taking the time. Um, I guess let's jump straight in. I want to find out all about Watermelon, what it does, and I guess more importantly, why you decided to start this concept. Okay. So um, Watermelon is an ecosystem for the food and beverage industry, which means everything and anything you need in the food and beverage world, you find in one place. It started because I had a supply company and I also had a restaurant called Mamatani, which uh, unfortunately I had to shut down. And while working in that, on the restaurant and, and, and try to expand it, I found out that there are so many nuances in the food and beverage world. And the food and beverage world is really not where it's supposed to be technologically. It's really behind in a lot of different ways, especially when it comes to the local farmers. And I decided that this has to change and has to be fixed. And that's what Waterman, how Waterman came about. Uh, today we boast uh, over 400 suppliers, over 40,000 different SKUs. We also very, very proudly uh, boast a capability for farmers to sell directly to the business world, from hotels all the way to catering companies to restaurants. So chefs today are able to buy from the farmer directly through an easy, efficient, and transparent method. And it just makes everybody's life better. That's Amar, amazing. genuinely, while uh, Khalid was on that report talking about Achirio, I was trying to get all of us to go down there after this. And you said, I'd love to. I always give my card to people when I go to restaurants. Do you, is that how you get your clients? You go try the restaurants and make connections that way? So we have a couple of different ways. Of course, there's a lot that do come to us through our uh, different means, from Instagram to, uh, to, to our website. Can't forget but, about LinkedIn. And LinkedIn, of course, <laughs> yes, without a doubt. But uh, we love to go and see the chefs themselves and talk to them because all of them have a lot of uh, challenges. And they don't believe it when we sit with them because we make those challenges go away and make life easy for them and have them really concentrate on making beautiful food. I mean, you were talking about your uh, eggs benedict, I think, mm. for 50 dirhams. Yep. But if you knew what was in that, then you wouldn't mind paying the 50. If you knew the egg came from a specific farm, it was organic or not, the bread and how it was made and the flour, and if you knew how much you were contributing to the local economy, which is also something that we help chefs do, then I think uh, you'd have a very different view of 50 and you'd probably think that it's not that expensive. Now, Omar, I'm just curious, earlier on, I love, by the way, I just love how you are helping local farmers. That is amazing. And I'm just curious how you make it easier for uh, business owners to connect to these local farmers. Could you elaborate a little bit on that one? Yes, absolutely. So local farmers, for them to be able to reach businesses, usually they have to go through wholesalers which means a farmer here and everywhere around the world has to go to the fruits and vegetable market, find a wholesaler and sell his fruits and vegetables at wholesale prices. And not saying anything bad because we have very, very good and very, very strong aggregators and wholesalers that we work with who are excellent. However, it does put layers between the farmer and the end consumer, as well as the farmer and the chef. Therefore, we've stopped that and the chef can now order those fruits and vegetables directly from the farmer. We have logistics partners which help the farmer with their logistics to make sure that they can get their produce to those chefs wherever they may be in the UAE. We also have a lot of different things that we do for them from marketing, uh, I mean, it's all support that we, that we do for them. Um, that's not to say that we don't also help them find wholesalers. So they can sell to wholesalers, they can sell to traders, and they can also sell directly to hotels and restaurants and chefs through one ecosystem. Beautiful. And this is really empowering these farmers. And I want to know, what about in, into the future? Where do you see this evolving? Because I guess, you know, you're kind of a one of a kind at the moment. I'm guessing you're kind of hoping that other people will join the kind of revolution, as it were. But how do you see this uh, evolving in the food industry? So being an ecosystem, and I love this because I'm a friend of everyone. So I love everybody, which is wonderful to be. And a lot have joined this ecosystem. So 
Today, we have financial institutions and financial companies that have joined. So in the near future, we will be able to help farmers and restaurants with their cash flow requirements and their financing requirements, because as you probably know from, from the other guests that you've had, it's very tough to run this business. And one of the reasons I had to shut down was because financially it was very tough for me uh, to manage it as well as to, to, to find the financing I needed for my daily operations. We've made that possible. So it's not just the logistics and not just the ability to import and export and not just the fact that you can deal with farmers directly. We also have financing where financial institutions have joined us. We have the ability for you to get your own tech. So for example, if you want more advanced technology that, that will help you with your business, we already are integrated with multiple entities and, 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 and companies. So if I want to open a cafe, or if you want to open a cafe, you Thank come you. to Watermelon. <laughs> okay. We'll give you the POS, we'll give you the uh, marketplace, we'll give you the management capabilities, we'll give you the financing capabilities, we'll give you the chefs that will help you with your menu, we'll give you the day-to-day uh, uh, -day operations capabilities as well through one system. And when I say we'll give you, I mean all of us. The ecosystem is there to support you and everyone who's working in this ecosystem is there. And now you can reach people from catering companies all the way to chefs one easy to find. That's Something amazing. that struck me about your story, Omar, is as you told us, you started a restaurant, yes. it didn't really work out, and now you moved into something else. Uh, just to be more general, like, how did you find the strength or the inspiration to fail at something, let's say, uh, but find an opportunity out of it? So, what advice would you give entrepreneurs when it comes to that sort of a thing? So, after I came out of it, um, of Mamatani, which was a wonderful concept, it was a local local uh, uh, food and we use the best ingredients, I found it very hard to, I, I found myself in a situation saying that I know a lot of people who are going into this business and who are going to find those challenges. And then when I researched, I found out that everyone who's already in this business is facing the same challenges I did, but they're, you know, they're chugging along and they're making it happen. And I decided that I have the capability through my network and through my people that I know and to, to create really a an ecosystem, and I believe in ecosystem and platforms. That's that, that's something I believe in, and uh, and yeah, we built it, and and everybody has been been joining, and and it's beautiful. I think it's it's really turning out to be a very nice place for people to work. More importantly, I mean, this is this is something that a lot of people don't talk about and don't realize. The food and beverage industry is not as transparent as people think, is not as efficient as people think, and is not as trustworthy as people think. So we've actually made it efficient, transparent, and trustworthy. So when you're part of this ecosystem, you can be also very comfortable working because you know for a fact that if you order something, you're going to get that. And that's very important in this industry. Omar, we are amazed right now at what Watermelon can do for any budding restaurateur because it's just a one-stop shop. So thank you so much. We, we know you've got a lot of insights that you can bring out to the table later on once we bring in our other guests, so please stick around. Absolutely. But coming up, we are meeting the founders of the city's latest app, connecting customers to top-tier culinary experts. It's you cater after this, so don't go anywhere.